Welcome to track number 21 of All Out. John 14. Now I just want to share with you about what I call the spirit of truth and the liar. The spirit of truth and the liar. In John 14, okay, John 14, verse 16, it says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Amen. What do you think? Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Amen. Amen. Now, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. That is why, when you are in this meeting, and you are in church like this, Okay, the truth seems so obvious. Is that not so? Is it not so clear that your vision has kept God away from you? How many realize it's so clear? It's amazingly clear. It's because of the Holy Spirit. Because I'm sharing with you what the Holy Spirit is saying. Not what I am saying. I didn't know all these things either. I also came to learn them here. Amen. So, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And when you are in the presence of the Holy Spirit, and under the influence of the Holy Spirit, truth comes so clear. There is nothing more clear and more true than what He shows us. It is so easy to see. But as soon as you step outside the environment of where the Spirit of God is dwelling, and where he's being worshipped and he's being given a free reign, you begin to have something else. Shall we read Revelations? Chapter 20. And what does it say? And I saw an angel in verse 1 come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. Amen. Amen. When the devil was bound for a thousand years, what happened? There was peace. Alright? And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received the mark in their foreheads nor in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed, is, blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection on such the second death hath no power but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years Amen, Amen. now this is the part I want you to notice verse 7 when the thousand years are expired Satan shall be loosed out of the prison what's going to happen and he shall go out to deceive the nations Okay, which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of, the, of whom is as the sand of the sea. You, you see the presence of the devil. Hmm? Are you there? And um, brings about two things. Conflict. Because as soon as he was really went and caused that the war. What do you think? So all forms of conflict between husband and wife, 
friend and friend, nation and nation, tribe against tribe, people against people. All kinds of conflicts are caused, are you listening, by the presence of the devil. Is it not amazing? How many are surprised that the devil is as such? He's really the one behind everything. So, as soon as you see conflict in a church, in a home, anywhere, the devil is there. Because when he was bound for a thousand years, there was peace for a thousand years. That's, that's what they call the millennium. The, the, the peace. The one year, thousand years of peace. Of the absence of the devil on this earth. Is it not amazing? What do you think? Is it a good idea? But even more noticeably, you see the effect of the devil through the telling of lies. He tells you things that are not true and you believe them. You understand? And so, ladies and gentlemen, the devil's presence in your life is greatly or largely there to tell you a lie. So that you believe things that are not true. Things that are not the case. Things that are deceptions. And then you believe it and live your life according to that deception. And the spirit of truth comes to save you from those deceptions. Amen. Amen. And so that is like, for instance, your pre- your being at this meeting, when we are in the presence of the Lord and we are singing and worshipping the Lord, you find out that this deception, you understand, which we are all under, you get it? Uh, it's lifted for a, a while. You understand? And that is why it's so clear that the only thing you would like to do is to serve God. Yeah. How many realize that when you are here, there's only, only one thing you want to do? I mean, you, you want to leave your job, you want to leave your school, you want to leave everything, and there's only one, which is the truth. That's the truth of life, and the truth of God, and the truth of ministry, and the truth of everything, is that there's only one thing. And that is God, and it is to, to serve Him. And you, you, you feel and realize the lack of importance of money, and of accomplishment, and of wealth, and of London, and of everything. Only God is important in the presence of the Spirit. But as soon as you step out, the liar who has been sent to deceive meets you. You understand? Through the help of other unbelievers, non Christians, Tony Blair. And the government and the world, President Bush and everything. And we have a new belief. Which is something else. But how real and how clear it is. When we are in his presence. How only one thing matters. And the only thing that matters is that God who fills all in all. Is it not amazing? Huh? And that is why in order to keep yourself walking in truth. And walking in the Word, you need to constantly give yourself the environment that allows such preachings, teachings, and so on to flourish around you. And to have people who are like that and have adopted some of these truths as truths indeed to be in your life as part of your, as your friends. You understand, not people who are contrary to such things, but rather people who love God, people who worship Him, people who walk in truth. The closer you are to them, the more truth becomes the correct thing. But when you are moving with deceived people, the deception becomes the truth and becomes the accepted norm. Hallelujah. The other day I was on a, on a flight by, I was sitting by a man. And uh, when he brought out his passport, I recognized the country that he came from. So I, I just said, oh, you come from this? He said, yeah, I do. He said, oh, okay. Then um, I began to talk to him. And so on. And I said to him, you know, you believe in God. Yeah, I believe in God. Do you go to church? I don't go to church much. I'm not talking. Then he got a point. He said, you know, the most important thing for me is one thing. It's my family and my friends and the people who have supported me in this life. You know, they are the important people. And that's, that's what matters. 
in this life. Just to be good. And he said, I don't, I don't do anything bad to anyone. I don't do anything bad to anyone. All that I do and all that I am is to be good. And I, and I work for the bank. I said, are you married? He said, I'm not married. I'm engaged. I'm a good person. And all that matters is my family and my friends. And to be happy. I said to him, there is more than to be happy with your family and your friends. There is God. You've got to think about God. And I said to him, what will happen to you when you die? That's a good question. That's what he said. That's a good question. He hadn't thought about that. And so the devil has a whole lot of lies for you to believe. All that matters is my family and my friends. How nice it sounds. What could sound nicer? What could sound more decent? He said, I believe in the law of karma. You know, what, what, I, what I do, you know, is, is very important to do good to people. I, I, he said, as far as I know, I've, I've been good. <laughs> it sounds so nice. So real. Isn't it? And these are the principles upon which the world is based, with which we have so much war and conflict. The two most democratic nations of the world, so called peaceful loving nations, we have started more, we have started more wars, conquering, fighting, stirring up things all over the world. It's marvelous. I said, it's marvelous and wonderful. We, like, we are so look peaceful. Yeah, we have so much war. Isn't it? You know, the one of the most war starting nations in the world is America. There are very few countries which have as much war and soldiers and fighting as this country. And yet they are like the peaceful, peace loving, democratic principles of life and of God and in God we trust. And It's amazing. God bless America. The devil went out to deceive them. And then they started to fight. To gather them to fight. So sometimes the devil has gathered you and your husband, you and your wife to fight in the sitting room. He has gathered them. He comes to us. I'm going to gather them from the kitchen and him from the office to the house to war. <laughs> So I want you to know that what you are hearing here is the truth. And it's so clear because the Spirit is here. He said, where two or three are gathered, I'll be there. Not that he wasn't there when you were alone. He was. Because he's everywhere. But when he says where two or three are gathered, it means therefore that since he was there when you were alone and he's there when you are two or three, that means that he's not saying that he's now going to buy a ticket to fly from where he is to come to where you are having a meeting. But it means that his presence will be increased and augmented when two or three gather. And therefore when more people are there, the presence of the Spirit is even more and more felt and more manifest. Because he's everywhere. Bible says the eyes of the Lord are everywhere. The Lord is everywhere, present everywhere, all the time, watching everything. Do you see but when we two or three gather in his name, the way he is there with us is different from when he's there with us when we are alone. It's higher. And it's quite clear. You know. And so expose yourself. If you are, because you'd be surprised, you may be here, but you are not somebody who controls the environment of your life. You need to control friends. I'm telling you, you need to control even television. I feel that spirits sometimes come into the room because of television. Even when there's nobody in the room and the television is on. Sometimes I think evil spirits are welcome into a place. Because you can imagine a room where there's a television and very evil things are happening on the television. It's just a small room and the television is on alone. Do you understand? Maybe some terrible evil occultism, pornography, something, something is there and it's on. Just in, the, in a room with, which is closed, like a small room in one of your London flats, and it's on for hours. Don't you think there will be evil spirits in that room? There are evil spirits there. 
But when you are in the presence of the Lord, worshiping the Lord, worshiping the Lord, worshiping the Lord, it's so true. What is true? What is true? What is true? What he says is truth. You see, and the devil is so good at telling us things that are not true. You know? It makes us believe. It makes us do. It makes us live our lives. And we only believe the truth on our deathbeds. And we only believe the truth when we can't do anything about the new truth we've believed. Huh? You get it? You only believe when there's nothing you can do anymore about what you are believing. What do you think? Very sad. Is that not so? And so, I want you to understand what is happening to us here. It's just the spirit of truth. It's just counteracting the presence of the devil in your life. And as soon as the devil is in your life, he gathers you to fight. Let's go and gather them to come to fight. Gather them to fight with their pastor. Gather them to fight with their bishop. Gather them to fight with their choir leader. Gather them to fight against one another. Gather them to fight over any topic and any issue. Let's gather them for a conflict. And then, he will use that to just waste your time. Lie to you. But when you come and the spirit of truth is there, you've got to try hard to maintain the presence of this spirit so that you will be led into the right things of God. How many want to be led by the spirit of truth? Stand to your feet. How many are feeling sleepy? I just want to be where you are Dwelling daily in your And I don't want to worship from afar Draw me near to where Where 